Hello, it's me Sucha, aka Primal Yogi. Here today, I am giving you a tour of my fridge, my cabinets, everything I have. And if you are just hopping onto my channel now, basically, I've gone through like so many different diets or what I'd like to call lifestyles and me kind of just living my expression, my truth, my experience here on this planet. And so I've been vegan for four years. I did do a huge transition to animal-based eating without knowing that was the intention. It actually led me to the carnivore diet, which I do have a video on, and I've actually done a whole week of just eating steak. So I have a video on those as well, but here I am with a more primal approach a more balanced approach for me personally. Balance is gonna look really differently for everybody based on what they're dealing with, what their system agrees to, but it is an ancestral approach to eating, so it is heavy on the meat, aka animal-based, but I also include some seasonal fruit, some dried fruit, some honey, and some dairy, which has been my most recent addition, and actually you'll see a lot of dairy here today. Every time I try to film this video, there's always some key components missing that I want to share with you. And you know what? I was like, that's just the reality. We don't always have everything that we want in our fridge, in our hands. Our ancestors for sure didn't have everything they wanted right away. So here we go. Here's my fridge. I do share it with my roommate. We kind of have a setup where this side of the fridge and freezer is hers and then my side is kind of over here. So it's gonna look a little bit different both sides of the fridge and freezer. This is my freezer side and basically all it has is a bunch of frozen meat. I keep it frozen because a lot of the ones that I get delivered and that I buy are frozen when I come. Pretty much my main source, like the bulk of what I eat is grass-fed, finished, regenerative ground beef. And I'm able to source it actually from a local ranch I work with called Perennial Pastures Ranch here in San Diego County. When I lived in Florida, I actually ordered most of my meat from Force of Nature and White Oak Pastures. So I'll link those all below. And based on where you are, I would try to source something that's closest to you that's gonna ensure that it's the highest quality, it's traveling less, to come to you and you can also get to maybe even meet or visit your ranchers that are really raising your meat and you know having a direct positive impact on the climate and that gives you an opportunity to actually connect more with your community the ranchers the farmers maybe you even have a farmer's market close by where you're able to source your meat from so this is the ground beef so just straight up ground beef it's an 85 15 blend which is really nice because it's still super juicy and nice and tasty but it is a good amount of protein to fat ratio the other one i've been loving when we do have it in stock is the ancestral blend and this has beef liver and heart mixed in it so i'm big on organ meats i don't actually get the full-on organ meats raw and eat them i'm just not at that level yet but also they're harder to source with the good quality kind because there's such limited availability so the supplements can be a great alternative if you aren't able to get your hands on an ancestral blend. I do know that White Oak Pastures and Force of Nature that I mentioned do have blends that do have organ meats in them. If you wanted to do like bison even, or beef, even chicken, they have a blend where you can get the organ meats in that mix as well. Okay, don't at me about the plastic. I know everything's in plastic these days, but in here I have a few cuts of cross cut shank, which you can make asubuco with. So if you can see here, you see like the bone marrow, the bone, and then all the meat around here. So I got this actually from a market that does halal meat. It's a Persian market in the area. And so you can find that around you if you have access to it. If you're able to get this from your actual ranch, even better. So I just have three big pieces in here. And when I thaw them out, I put them in my Instant Pot and they're delicious for broth and also just super tender, juicy meat. The other thing I love that I order from a site called Wild Fork Foods is bone marrow. It is not grass-fed and finished. It's just so hard to find grass-fed finished bones. And the ranch that I do source most of my meat from 
doesn't always have those cuts because they are a regenerative ranch, which means they don't always process and butcher all of the things. So that's where nose to tail eating and ancestral eating comes into play is you're kind of eating with the seasons, you're eating what's available. This is bone marrow. You can see it right here. It's a nice cut with all the bone marrow inside. And so I have that a few times a week when I can. In my fridge, you'll usually find a container with a bunch of chopped up either beef heart or beef liver it's from Wild Fork as well. It is not a high quality. If you saw my feeding my dog raw food video, then you'll know that this is always for Duke. I have his food prepped on the daily. So I have ground turkey and chopped up beef liver here for him. Sometimes I cycle it out with ground beef and then the beef heart. And so that is for him. I feed my dog all raw. So there's definitely frozen stuff and refrigerated stuff that is for my doggo. All right, so although I am fully animal-based and take a primal approach, I still love coffee. And after years of experimenting, I found that cold brew actually feels the best for my system. Something about hot coffee sometimes can be a little bit acidic. I also love drinking it while it's hot. And so I end up drinking it really fast because I don't want it to cool down. And so cold brew has been the perfect balance to actually sip on it for like Honestly, over the course of two hours, usually I'm just sipping on my cold brew and I've also found the flavor is really nice and complex and it's also way easier to make it at home and just more time efficient. So if I go to a coffee shop that I love that has growlers where they fill up their cold brew, then I usually get that if it's on tap. I've mostly been getting this brand from Sprouts and it's at Whole Foods and uh, most grocery stores. It's the Chameleon brand. This is a cold brew concentrate. I don't get any of the crazy flavors because I don't like using artificial flavors. So this is the just the black coffee and how it works is since it's a concentrate, you either mix it with water or milk or both. Something new, this is my first time trying it, is actually raw goat milk. So this is the raw farm brand. Sometimes I can get my raw cream from the farmer's market. And I know some states actually don't allow some raw milk and raw dairy, which is super unfortunate. But if you can get your hands on raw dairy, take the time to adjust, transition it into your diet, then see what works for you. This is my first time trying the raw goat milk and it oddly tastes pretty good with the cold brew. It's a really complex, intense flavor for sure. So very slow sipping, but I do love it. And it's been feeling okay on my system so far. So what do I cook all of my food in? Typically I have grass fed butter. Right now I don't have butter. I did order grass fed beef tallow from Amazon. I'll include that link below. And so this jar is definitely lasting me a long time. And this is just rendered beef fat. I actually love cooking with it the best. I feel like it's the best with my system. It's the most natural and it's the most sustainable I feel like as well. Um, so I just use a little bit of this. It literally taste like beef anyways so it's not really intruding with the flavor i also love cooking with ghee currently i don't have ghee but when i do have ghee it's really nice to cook some of my meat in that as well so the beef is primarily what i eat and that's always frozen i do love fruit my favorite fruit are medjool dates i go through these a good amount i probably take like you know, a few days to go through this box. So I do have two containers of this in my fridge right now. I love them cold. They taste so good cold. So this is definitely a staple in my fridge. I do go to the farmer's market and I try to get all of my fruit at the farmer's market. The one I go to doesn't always have dates. So that's why I did get my dates at Sprouts. But I have a few other go-to staple items I love getting at the farmer's market. So one of the stands I go to is called Smith Farms here in San Diego. And they have these dried nectarines when they are in season. They're so good and they're just delicious to chew on. They also have like dried cherries and sometimes they have dried apricots. So love those. Yesterday I did pick up cherries. I got a mix of two different kinds of cherries. The red ones are a little bit more tart. The wider ones are a little bit more sweet. Cherries are amazing. They're super highly nutrient dense, kind of underrated and they are in season. So these I don't have all of the time, but I do cycle in fruit. So sometimes I have like apples, sometimes I have these, sometimes I have full on nectarines or peaches, plums, tropical fruit i love usually papaya would be my tropical fruit of choice pineapple does not do well with my system and mango can actually be really intense on my system too 
the two other products I cycle out and don't always have, but since I went to Sprouts just yesterday, I do have right now, are my other forms of dairy. So just for the past few months, I've been incorporating cottage cheese a few times a month. I love this brand, it's called Good Culture. It has all of the cream, it's like super satiating. You know, half a cup is 110 calories. I don't count calories at all, but like I do feel like it's a great go-to, whether it's at the end of the day or a snack or just to supplement my meals. The other one is yogurt. And oh my gosh, this is my first time trying this brand. It's Nancy's Grass-Fed Yogurt. I didn't realize this was vanilla when I bought it. Usually I would have just got it plain, but I totally missed that. I'm just not a huge fan of including stuff with like vanilla extract or anything added, but this one is so, so creamy. I'll show you right now. You can see that cream top. Oh my goodness. Wow. A few other things that I have once in a while in my fridge are if I do go to the grocery store or a butcher shop and come across a good cut of meat that I want to include and want to switch it up from just ground meat. So that could be like ribeyes to kind of treat myself or a New York strip steak. Yesterday at Sprouts, I found a nice cut of chuck roast and this is just so tender if you keep it in a few hours in the instant pot. So definitely going to make this very soon. And then the one other ingredient that I have sometimes is raw cheese or grass-fed cheese or raw grass-fed cheese if i can find it and that is just delicious it's a really nourishing treat cheese has so many nutrients if you get a good quality cheese so that's a once in a while kind of treat as well okay so that concludes what's in my fridge now we're gonna go over to the cabinet spaces so you saw that i primarily eat meat and then i have fruit and some raw dairy the other thing that i love incorporating into my diet is honey it's actually one of my main sources of carbs so I have two kinds of honey and I get them both from the farmers markets here in San Diego one is honeycomb and one is just full-on honey that I can drizzle on my ground beef here is the drizzling kind of honey this is from the Smith farms that's in many of the farmers markets here and I have this orange blossom honeycomb absolutely incredible this with raw cheese is literally like mind-blowing or sometimes i put this just a little spoon in my yogurt and it's like literally dessert this is from farmer's daughter and this honey is from temecula i am super particular about the salt i use so my go-to is redmond real salt i just order this on amazon and then i have a little shaker that i just fill this salt into all right supplements i don't like to use supplements, honestly. If I don't need to use supplements, I don't use them, but supplements come in handy with this way of eating when you're not always able to eat nose to tail and get all the parts of the animal. The vital proteins, collagen is great, and I incorporate this on weeks that I don't have time or don't have access to bones to make bone broth. And the main reason is because I want the collagen from it. So this is where the collagen comes into play. And if I'm feeling it, I basically blend the collagen in my coffee and it makes it super brothy. The other things I cycle in and out of are these organ supplements. So I showed you that I use an ancestral blend and because I currently have access to that, then that's my source of organ meats. But when I don't have that, I actually just open up these capsules and sprinkle them on my ground beef. For some reason, my body just rejects any kind of capsules that I'm swallowing. So I just open this up. It's literally just pure grass fed organ meats that are uh, like freeze dried really fast. So they're desiccated. Desiccated is what they're called. So desiccated organ meats. So I can just open this up and sprinkle it. And I've actually been really growing to love the flavor because it tastes kind of like seasoning because I don't use anything except herbs once in a while when I cook meat. So this is kind of a nice little flavor, but it's like organ flavor. You know what I'm saying? You know, my preferred way to get collagen is through bone broth I'm making myself. I also use the collagen powder to supplement, but I also love the Kettle and Fire brand. These are my favorite two flavors. This is just straight up beef bone broth, and that's probably my go-to. The Crosscut Shanks Asubuco that I showed you, I just put that in my instant pot and then pour this in there and it's literally so fire and it gets so thick and then if you put the broth in the fridge then it gets all jello like like that jello consistency now for my woman and for men depending on like where you are with your hormones and what you're feeling throughout the week and how you view 
plant foods as medicinal, you may or may not be doing cacao. My friend has this brand called Zana's Plant Magic and she has this cacao mushroom blend. So I would say I only do this about once or twice a month where I make a cacao drink, where I use this with something else, like making like date bowls and making them with cacao. I love this when I'm around my period cycle because I feel the cravings for cacao and I feel like it's super soothing and it works well with my system while I'm on my cycle. So I have coffee. I rarely do tea, but I have a chai rubos. And then I have a bedtime tea, but these are really occasional. These are kind of if like someone's coming over and I want to make a quick tea for them. I don't know why like tea doesn't, it's not my favorite. I've tried so many times, but it just doesn't sit well with me. So the things that I do have are like a French press if I am making fresh coffee, but I showed you that my go-to is kind of the cold brew. The very last thing that you might see peeping is a very occasional thing, and that is red wine. And I always make sure when I'm sourcing it that it is a good source because your quality of wine matters. This is, you know, the base of it is grapes. So I would say it falls within the primal way of eating, although alcohol can still be very not good for your system and everyone has a different relationship with it. So I'm gonna let you kind of determine where you are with alcohol, but I love to use wine as celebratory with my friends. When you drink wine, you are literally like tasting history. I mean, this is fermented. So fermentation, just like cheese, is a ritual that our ancestors used. And so, so fermented grapes, which is basically wine, is really nice to have once in a while. Definitely don't feel the best when I drink, but it is occasional and I'm just being real with you. Plus this one has a monkey. I got it in Topanga when I visited last and I'm stoked to try this bottle out. So that wraps up what is in my fridge and my cabinet. I hope you enjoyed that. If you do have a doggo, be sure to check out the raw food dog video that I created because then you'll get a better glimpse of what I have in my fridge for my dog specifically. But this is basically what I got for the human. It's the primal approach that has been working so well for me. Really keeping it simple. I follow intermittent fasting and I do longer fasts sometimes times pretty much eat two meals a day and if I do snack it's on fruits and honey and that changes and I take it very intuitively but this has been something I've been experimenting with and also coach people with over the years so if you enjoy that please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe it really does support me putting out more of this and I'll know that you like these kinds of videos so I can do more of this kind of content and you can find me on Instagram it's at primal.yogi if you you are interested in coming into an immersive experience with our Live Bliss tribe. Live Bliss is the company that I run where we organize retreats and experiences for you all over the world. Then you can check out our website also below. We have our upcoming Moab retreat that happens every year in Moab, Utah. It is absolutely incredible and you'll get the full primal immersion where we'll eat this primal way. We'll also be doing a 24 hour fast and we'll be grounding down with nature. It'll be an amazing tribe. So you're welcome to that as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and until next time.